Hey friends, this is Randall with PARSOL, the Pennsylvania Association for Rational Sexual Offense Laws, and I've got an update for you on some recent developments with Pennsylvania Sex Offense Registry. So I'm here in Harrisburg in front of the Judicial Center, uh, and this is one possible venue that will see the fate of Pennsylvania's Megan's Law Registry in the coming months. Now the big development this week was the decision by the Chester County Court of Common Pleas, which was a case that was remanded from the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania. And the Supreme Court asked the lower court to have the Commonwealth prove their assertion that all 22,000 plus people on Pennsylvania Sex Offender Registry are in fact a high risk. So the point in this case, which was is uh, named Torcellari v. Commonwealth, or Commonwealth v. Torcellari, was that the defendant, Mr. Torcellari, said that you cannot make the irrebuttable presumption, you cannot make a blanket statement about all of these people listed on this registry that they are a high risk to the public without evaluating them one by one and proving that they are in fact a high risk or giving them a chance to rebut this statement, rebut this classification that they are high risk uh, recidivists who need to be set to the margins of society and you know cannot be trusted and uh, to have the full liberty that other people enjoy. And so the lower courts examined this issue. The, the defense was able to present their, their evidence and their peer-reviewed research on levels of recidivism and the likelihood that people who are listed on this registry will offend. And the Commonwealth had their opportunity to present their evidence and uh, convince the court that yes, all 22,000 of these people on this list deserve to have some of their liberties infringed upon. And, and that this law should stand, that the, the sex offense registry should stand. And so the court did just that. They heard arguments from the defense and from the Commonwealth to, to, to make their statements, uh, to make their cases. And the decision came back that, in fact, our state's Sex Offender Registration and Notification Act, also known as Megan's Law, SORNA, is unconstitutional. So this again was the Court of Common Pleas of Chester County, and so right now this only applies to Chester County. This is not a statewide decision, uh, but we have every reason to believe that the State Supreme Court will in fact weigh in on this decision, and this will in fact be a statewide, uh, statewide change. So, you know, I read through the 28-page uh, opinion yesterday, and you know, it's just really refreshing reading the professional legal opinion from uh, Judge Allison Bell Royer in uh, Chester County. And to, to see in writing all of the ideas and all of the re uh, evidence and research that we've been advocating for as PARSOL and other uh, groups have been advocating for around the nation, to see that written in an official court opinion is really refreshing and, and gratifying, you know, and it showed me and, and you and others who are supportive of, of this, this kind of a forum for rational sexual offense laws that we're not crazy. Uh, some, some highlights I wanted to share with you is that, uh, you know, as some of my colleagues in Parcel have, have said, the, the guys on the legal committee, the state just has no evidence. The state really has no evidence to demonstrate that all of the people on this registry are a high risk. And they had their chance to, to present it and uh, they, they, they did not convince the court. Their star witness or their star uh, researcher it goes by the name of Dr. McClearly. And in this opinion, uh, Judge Royer uh, states uh, she questioned his credibility uh, with, with his statements. And, and she wrote that his arguments were inimical to common sense and also the obligations of this judiciary. So uh, as far as sick burns go, that's about as, as, as sick as you're going to get from, uh, from a 28-page legal opinion. Uh, Dr. McClearly brought up the idea of, of dark figures of, of, of crime reporting and the idea that not all crimes get reported. Uh, and so you can't trust the, the defense's uh, research that shows that, in fact, the levels of recidivism for people on registries are low. You can't trust this number because crimes don't get committed. Well, uh, the judge you know, had to point out that we don't punish people or make assumptions when there is no evidence. 
And so I'm sure there is, you know, uh, an element of a, a dark figure reporting, you know, some, some crimes certainly don't go reported, any crimes, I'm not just talking about sex offenses here, but the best research we have is what we have, and, and these research uh, items are peer-reviewed and uh, they, they're, not, uh, they're not lightly done, you know, they're painstakingly done and they're peer-reviewed. That's the best we have to go with, and the court agreed. Uh, the court wrote about real damages. Uh, we're talking about major difficulties in finding employment, in finding housing, and maintaining social, meaningful relationships. And as Dr. Letourneau and Dr. Hansen pointed out, these are major factors in uh, whether or not a person is going to have a successful re-entry. Now, this, uh, this objective or this goal uh, was plainly uh, stated by the Commonwealth that the, the state has an interest in facilitating re-entry and allowing people to uh, re-enter once their, their sentences have been served. And uh, in, in an opinion from Allegheny County from 2009, the court ruled that residency restrictions, you know, uh, preventing or uh, prohibiting people from living within a certain distance of schools or playgrounds or bus stops was contrary to the stated objective of facilitating re-entry. And so that was struck down. Now, the, the uh, justice in this case uh, applied that same logic to this, the sex offender registry in itself, uh, that, it, that it has real effects, real damages to people who are listed on it, and also to their family members and, and to their friends. Uh, the court talked about a, a relief mechanism which is available to people in this state to, to be removed from the, the sex offender registry. And uh, that's available to a person after 25 years of, of being listed on the registry. And uh, the court called this illusory and uh, cosmetic, this, this relief mechanism. Because realistically, after 25 years, you know, the damage has already been done. The people who have a registration period of 15 years, well, a 25 year mechanism for relief is meaningless. And to people who have a 25 year uh, term of, of registration, it's also meaningless. So this only applies to people with a lifetime registration. And again, 25 years after you've been placed in this list, they talked about you know, the best years of your life already being gone, and your most productive years already being gone, the 25 years after your re-entry into society. And so uh, the court was not happy with uh, the, the Commonwealth's argument that no, there is a mechanism for relief. Finally, the, the 20, in the 28 page opinion, the, the justice uh, pointed out the, the, the real infringement of privacy that this registry has uh, for people. And you know, sometimes these people have committed crimes 20 years ago, but every, so many personal details of, of their life has to be reported to the state, to the police. And I think anybody who has an interest in liberty and freedom and the ideals that we espouse in this state and around the country would have a problem with this idea. Every detail of your life, from your appearance to the scars on your body, tattoos, the car you drive, where you decide to go to school, if you want to move, they all have to be reported to the police as soon as you make them, or else you're going to go to prison for 10 years if you're convicted. And so again, uh, we're not crazy for advocating for these issues, and uh, it was a great affirmation of this idea uh, from the, the Court of Common Pleas this week. Uh, there's plenty more to say about uh, this opinion, and we're going to go deeper into it, but I wanted to get something up soon because uh, we've been getting a lot of questions on this, and it, it is a big deal. Uh, but just some, some, uh, some cautionary words that, again, this is a, a county-level court. It's a court of common pleas for Chester County. This is not a statewide decision yet. Um, the, the, the law was ruled unconstitutional, yes, but any judge can rule a law unconstitutional, and it doesn't affect uh, everybody in the state until it gets to our highest court. So if you haven't checked out our uh, press release on it and our, 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 our updates on our website, go check it out now. Uh, read the 28 opinion, opinion page, uh, 28 page opinion for yourself. It's very informative and, 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 and affirming. Um, be sure to subscribe to our channel because we have some new videos coming out on the right to reputation. Another element that uh, Judge Royer brought up in, in her opinion, the damage to a person's reputation that, uh, that the registry causes and we're going to uh, get some more content on this channel soon so thanks as always for uh, supporting us, spare a couple bucks, donate to keep us alive and uh, 
We'll keep fighting for you and for a safer and more just Pennsylvania for all.